Thomas Galliano, born Tommaso Galliano, Italian, Tom, modifier letter vertical line, ma, modifier letter triangular colon, zo ga, Latin small letter turned y, modifier letter vertical line, Latin small letter turned y, a, modifier letter triangular colon, no, May 29th, 1883, minus sign, February 16th, 1951 was an Italian-American mobster and boss of what U.S. federal authorities would later designate as the Lucchese crime family, one of the five families of New York City. He served as a low-profile boss for over two decades. His successor was his longtime loyalist and underboss, Tommy Lucchese. Early life Galliano was born on May 29, 1883 in Corle I, Sicily. In 1905, he immigrated to the United States, in New York City, and married Jewish Brina, Josephine Pamela, who was also from Corleone. Galliano and his brother-in-law Nunzio Pamela were partners in lathing and toasting companies in the Bronx. He served as underboss to Gaetano, Tom, Reina until he became the boss of the family in 1930. The Reina family controlled a monopoly on ice distribution in the Bronx. Galliano along with Gaetano, Tommy, Lucchese and Stefano, Steve, Rundelli were viewed as the most powerful members of the Reina family. Frank Galliano was a distant relative of Tommy Galliano and the son of a deported mobster. He was also the cousin of mob boss Thomas Ebola's chauffeur and bodyguard future Genovese crime family under boss Dominica Longhi who would later achieve notoriety when they were among the many mobsters arrested fleeing the famous 1957 Appalachian meeting. He was a blood relative of mobster Joseph, Pip the Blind Galliano, who became a childhood friend and early accomplice of future government witness Joseph Valici. The two performed many burglaries and armed robberies together. Castel Marie's war during the late 1920s, a bitter gang rivalry arose in New York between Joseph, the boss, Masria, the most powerful mobster in New York, and Salvatore Maranzano, head of the Castel Marie's Sicilian clan. Masria had demanded more money from Reina, prompting Reina to consider switching allegiance to Maranzano. When Masria heard about Reina's plans, Masria murdered him in February 1930. To head Reina's gang, Masria appointed one of his loyalists, Joseph Pinzolo. Both Galliano and Lucchese hated Pinzolo and resented Masria appointing an outsider as gang leader. In September 1930, Pinzolo was shot and killed by unknown assailants. To replace Pinzolo, Masria appointed Galliano as head of the Reina gang. It is speculated that Galliano and Lucchese formed a secret alliance with Maranzano at this time while still professing loyalty to Masria. As the war continued, Masria began suffering more defeats and key defections. On April 15, 1931, Masria was assassinated at Brooklyn Restaurant by several of his men. These defectors, guided by Charles Lucky Luciano, had made the deal with Maranzano guaranteeing their power if they switched sides. However, after Masria's death, Maranzano started promoting himself as the boss of all bosses for all the Italian-American criminal gangs in the country. Feeling betrayed and threatened, Luciano arranged Maranzano's assassination a few months later in September 1931. During this period of instability, Galliano remained in control of the Reina gang. Cosa Nostra families after Maranzano's death, Luciano restructured all the Italian-American criminal gangs into several crime families regulated by a commission of family bosses. The aim of this restructuring was to settle disputes without bloody gang wars. The New York City gangs were divided into five crime families. Galliano took over the old Reina family, with Lucchese as his underboss. As a boss, Galliano became a member of the commission. Galliano steered the family through a period of high tension between the five families. In 1936, Luciano was sent to prison and then, in 1946, deported to Italy. With Luciano's absence, power on the commission was held by an alliance of bosses Vincent Mangano, 
Joe Bonanno, Stefano Magadino and Joe Profacci. Galliano had to be very careful in the face of this alliance, and was keen to keep a low profile while furthering the business interests of his section of Cosa Nostra in industries such as gasoline rationing, meat and black market sugar. He usually issued his orders through his close allies, particularly Lucchese, who served as the family's public face and de facto street boss. As a result, very little is known about Galliano between 1932 and his death from natural causes in the 1950s. In 1932, Galliano was convicted of tax evasion and sentenced to 15 months in the Atlanta Penitentiary. Date of death The actual date of Galliano's death is still uncertain. In 1951, Lucchese stated during the Senate hearings on organized crime that Galliano died on February 16, 1951. However, some historians believe Galliano died in 1953. It has been speculated that Galliano retired in 1951 and turned leadership over to Lucchese, but kept this information secret to prevent law enforcement or media scrutiny. However, there is no concrete evidence to support this theory. According to Joseph Valici, Galliano died of natural causes in 1953. Tommy Galliano is interred in a private mausoleum at Woodlawn Cemetery, Bronx, New York. In popular culture Galliano is mentioned in the Valachi Papers, 1972, starring Charles Bronson, when Salvatore Maranzano, Joseph Wiseman announces the bosses of the five families. In 2014, El Dorado the last episode of the final season of Boardwalk Empire, Galliano is played by Salvatore and Zirillo. He has a small speaking role and is seen sitting at the table as Lucky Luciano gathers the country's most powerful crime bosses and forms the commission. Notes References External links May, Allen, June 19, 2000. Gaetano Galliano, A Mafia Short Story. Retrieved March 18, 2020. Lucchese Crime Family Epic. Descent into Darkness, Tommy Galliano. Organized Crime Figure. Find a Grave. December 14, 2000. Retrieved March 18, 2020.